Victorian period, psychology opened up the child mind to an unprecedented amount of literary, scientific and medical scrutiny. Before the 19th century, people just didn't think that children could become mentally ill and thought that they weren't susceptible to the same diseases and immoral habits that adults were. The child of the 18th century was the highest symbol of innocence, born as a pure being and then later corrupted by the world. But the 19th century saw a complete transformation of this view, and the recognition that children could experience the same physical and emotional traumas that adults did. The hypothetical Victorian child was both sexualised and prone to disease. Some people even insisted that if a young child rambled or spouted nonsense that this could be a sign of insanity. The Victorian press and medical records eagerly documented children who were capable of some of the most extreme behaviours in human nature. All of a sudden, children could be insane, murderers or deviants. The consequence of this was an increasing desire to control the behaviour of children and adolescents. Now in the Victorian period, puberty generally started around the age of 14, however many thought that adolescence began at 18 and could go on all the way up till 25. Puberty was considered a very dangerous time, especially for women. The hormonal changes that accompanied puberty were thought to make women more susceptible to physical and mental disease, and menstruation was thought to further weaken a girl's inherently delicate disposition. During menstruation, girls were generally advised to stay at home, and were discouraged from engaging in any kind of intellectual, social or physical stimulation. Parents and guardians of these girls were not only concerned for their mental and physical well-being, they were also afraid of their daughter's awakening sexuality. Any expressions of sexuality, from flirting to masturbation, were thought to have medical and moral consequences. This is partly why girls were encouraged to marry at a young age, so that they had an appropriate outlet for their sexual energies. For the Victorians, puberty was not a simple transition from girlhood to womanhood, but also a period when a girl had to become responsible for her own emotions and actions. Ultimately, puberty was the time when a girl had to begin shaping herself into an ideal, noble Victorian woman. The fear of the sexual child can be found in many Victorian events, such as the publication of The Maiden Tribute of Modern Babylon. The series of articles published in the Pall Mall Gazette exposed the growing trade of child prostitution and called for the protection of young girls. This fear can also be shown by the fact that the age of consent was raised to 13 and then again to 16 in the space of 10 years, after having previously been set at 12 since the 13th century. Attempts to suppress and control young girls' sexuality were simply ingrained into everyday life. The Victorians thought that a girl should possess a womanly instinct which would protect her from any sexual threat, and unfortunately believed that the best way of shaping a girl's intellectual and moral life was through ignorance. Thanks for watching! If you haven't already, don't forget to watch the last episode of Victorians Exposed, and if you want to keep up to date with all of our videos, just click subscribe. We'll see you next time.